Okay, so for this last one, we're going to take a look at putting stencils on our objects. And that's just going to be like decals, like, you know, graphics, anything like that, warning labels, uh, just little details and how to incorporate that in with all the, uh, the paint damage and stuff that we've done. So there's a few different ways to do uh, decals in texture painting. I always do it on its own layer uh, just to keep it separate from everything else. I don't paint directly on the, any of the actual paint layers. Um, but you can do it where you paint the full color image or you can paint alpha maps and let either your paintbrush or the shader nodes determine the color. So we'll look at a couple of those ways. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the painting of a full, a full color label. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to remove from the texture mask our noise and in the texture, uh, I'm going to add a new texture because uh, we're going to actually paint with this texture. You can even turn this up to alpha, the, the full white just for, for the heck of it. I don't know if it actually affects any. I know this will. Uh, if you turn the, make sure your brush is up to 100%. And then we're, let's go get a texture. It's called texture one, but we'll, uh, it doesn't matter. So open and I'm going to provide you guys with a bunch of decals. And I have a couple that are full color. Let's grab this yellow caution one. You can see it pops in there. We can just go right back to our brush settings. Um, what we got here, there it is. Uh, it didn't pop up at the texture mask, which is perfect. However, we don't have a map yet to paint on. So we could either, we could go back here to the shading nodes and create another one, or you can do it right here in the texture paint. Um, you can actually just click this and say, uh, you can call it, you call it whatever you want. This is, uh, if you have a real simple setup, uh, or if you have an, um, if you have a shader selected and then click on this, it will create a map for you plugged into the correct, uh, slot on the shader. But because I don't have a shader yet for it, uh, I just want to, I'd rather create it in here and set it up manually. Uh, and also it'll help you understand exactly what's going on in here. So let's go ahead and create another new image map under texture, image texture, and just drop that node here, create new. We're going to call this decals. And we're going to make this one 8K because 4K may not be big enough for, uh, for the details of the, uh, to capture all the little, you know, we don't want it pixelated and all that. You want all the details and all the little text and all that. So let's make it 8K. Uh, the color doesn't matter. I set it to black. But what is important is that you have alpha checked and that you set the alpha to zero. That's very important. So go ahead and click OK. Now we've got our decal image. We're going to duplicate that mix shader yet again right here. And uh, you could plug the color directly into the shader, but it's good practice to at least throw like a diffuse in there. Uh, if you want your decals to be shiny, like a sticker or something, you can throw a glossy or a BSDF or whatever in there, but I'm just going to use diffuse for now. And it's all black right now because there's nothing on this. Um, if you take this alpha, plug it into the factor, it should go back to the paint. And that's exactly what we want to see. So now we can paint on this decal image and it won't affect anything else. So go ahead and jump back to texture paint. Uh, we've already got our decals image selected here. Uh, we have our texture ready to go. And if we set this, the mapping is set to tiled, right? So if you start painting, you just see it tiled in there. And that is not what we want. You can see it there. Uh, that's pretty useless. So I'm going to undo that, control Z. And I'm going to go ahead and set this from tiled to stencil. Now when I come, when as soon as the brush comes over the viewport, you can see it, it an image of it pops up down here. Uh, I'm going to click image aspect ratio so it's actually correct. Uh, that kind of resets the, the scaling to the, to the image. And this image does have an alpha channel and all that, so it should work perfectly. Um, and what this is is basically a stencil. We can move it around by right-clicking on that image and just moving it around. Uh, if you right click while holding shift, you scale it. And if you're holding control while you right click, you're rotating it. And you can also set some of that stuff over here. Uh, the angle, I like to set it back to zero. Um, but this is really fun. This is a great way to paint 
uh, paint decals on. Um, and it's going to paint from your view. So you do have to be very careful with how you do all this view stuff. So, uh, for example, say we want it right here on this, on this little, uh, thing here. Um, or better yet, let's put it down here. One of these, uh, we're somewhere that we already have lots of paint, like down here in between these two bolts, we'll put this caution. Maybe these are big magnets or something. So, uh, to get to that, you want to, you want to try if you can to use like an orthographic mode. And then if we kind of orthographic and kind of nudge to the side, I'm using, I went to orthographic using five on my number pad and now I'm using four and six to kind of bump around a little bit. And you can see that I can kind of get pretty lined up right there orthographically scale it down i'm going to zoom in even more I'll move this uh, uh dang it uh there we go did i i did uh uh i kind of messed it up there we go it's a little tricky to to line up these orthographics uh and then move that right there scale it up a bit like that and that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to go ahead again, shift F, make sure you're at full 100%. You can also go up here to the strength and uh, drag it up here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paint. And you can see it kind of becomes bolder. And that's because it's actually painting it under that overlay. So now you can see there it is. Uh, if I reset that transform, uh, there's there it is right on our object, just how we want it. Perfect. And then you can even go to the other side and do the same thing. You can go wherever you want and do keep put as many of those on as you want, right? So if we go front view, orthographic, I'm going to nudge to this side a bit, go back to orthographic, keep nudging right to the middle there. Drag this guy up here, scale it down a bit, try and guesstimate roughly the size it was over there, and paint again. And now you can see it's back on there. So there's two of them on here now, right? Yep, there they are. So that's cool, right? Um, let's reset transform, image aspect. There we go. So now you can see they're on there. And you can go, because now they're, oh, don't forget to do this actually. Save all images. And save your project. And then shading, and now that's a node, right? And it's, it's its own shader. We can actually plug in uh, all these maps that we're using to influence the paint, we can also influence these decals with. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw uh, this grunge into here and kind of break it up. So let's grab a converter, math, throw it in that alpha, right, where the, where the alpha is going to the factor, and set that to multiply. And there we go. And you can see already they're kind of dimmer, and that's because we've got it set to 0.5. But we're going to use this mat right here, plug that in, and now it's going to use this image, right? Which is that, basically. And we can, uh, uh, our favorite node, the old Keller ramp, throw it right there. And now we can dial it in just how we want it uh, with the Keller ramp. You can break it up a bit, and then bring some in a bit. That looks really cool, doesn't it? Kind of breaks it up. Looks awesome. And if that's still too bright for you, um, you can do, uh, that's where you can do that. And it'll still cut it down a bit, uh, how much it's being like overlaid like that. And that looks pretty, pretty dang good, I think. So that's one technique. That's the actual painting of an actual full color label. So let's take a look at painting uh, using the brush color as your stencil color. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to put something over here, I think, right? Let's put something over here. Yeah, over here, maybe. Um, go ahead. What do we, let's, we got to make our new image, right? Let's do that first. Make our new image texture, uh, image texture. And this one we're going to call, uh, leave it all the same, but call this one like decals two and hit okay and duplicate that mix again right here 
And this one, we're just going to right click the color, collect the BSDF in there, and the alpha into there again. So now whatever we paint on here is same setup, but we're just not going to use, uh, we're not going to use, uh, let me show you actually, let's jump in there. Let's jump into the texture paint. We're not going to use a texture. We're going to use a texture mask this time. So hit, um, hit new and back over to our texture tab, grab that new texture, open and another one of these decals. What do we want to put on here? Let's do, um, I don't know. Let's do this warning here, huh? Uh, let's do a big number. Let's do 84. Open. Um, go back to our paint thing here. And we don't want it in our texture. We do want it down here. We do want to set our mask mapping again to stencil. So it's down there. Image aspect. So it's the right aspect ratio. And now you may notice when you come down here to move it around, right clicking isn't working. And that's because it's the texture mask not the texture. What you want to do is hold down alt and now you can right click and move it around. Um, same thing. Alt control will rotate it. Uh, alt and shift will scale it. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reset the angle at least. Uh, the rest is pretty easy to do manually. And I'm going to go back to my front view, zoom in here a bit, nudge to the side a bit, orthographic, nudge again, uh, I like that right there. And we're going to put this 84 real big right here, I think. Yeah, I think that's going to look cool. And you can make it whatever color you want. Um, I think I think we should go with maybe like an orange or something. Maybe like that bronzish color. Kind of tie it all in together. Not as bright. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, make sure, you're, again, your strength is set. Uh, you can make the brush bigger and just go ahead and paint in there. And now you can see what's happening. Uh, 84 is in there. Um, we can go ahead, if you just delete that out. Now you can see there's your 84. Go back to worth, uh, perspective. Looks pretty good. Uh, it doesn't look like it fits in there at all. But that's again where we do the same thing here with our, uh, we can grab those. Uh, but you can see now how, how easy that was to have the paint control the color. And uh, it's the same thing if you were to just paint, uh, you could use this, for example, if we only use the alpha, um, oh, undo that. Uh, if we were to just, oh, come on. Uh, nope. Control. There we go. If we were to just use the alpha of what we painted, now you can use this to control the color, right? So um, that's super, super useful. Uh, yeah, like that kind of color. Uh, that's a little bright, I think, but whatever. You get the idea. And then we can, of course, use our multiplies again. I'm going to copy. Shift duplicate one up here and run this into that again. And hopefully it will cut it out. It looks good. Um, it doesn't look great, actually. Let me duplicate this and plug this in. We're going to use a different, uh, we'll use a different, um, you know, we just want to be able to dial it in separately, right? So we use a different color ramp for that and we can dial that back a bit and take bigger chunks out of it. So it looks a little, little grungier. Uh, you'll notice also that our, uh, what we painted is not being held out of it. Uh, that's very easy to fix as well. You want to add a, uh, you want to duplicate this guy again, this one here, duplicate here and plug our map into that and boom. So now it's being held out of everything. And, uh, and it's great. And if we do that with this thing as well, uh, with this other map, it, it looks like it's confusing, right? It's starting to get like, it's becoming this big node setup, but it all makes sense, right? We're just painting maps and then affecting their alpha channel and layering them, right? So we've, it's still pretty simple, right? Here's our base metal. Here's our 
primer coat, our paint coat, and now we're doing a couple of decal passes. Uh, and you could even, you know, you, there's ways to do this. We could set it up a little bit easier. I'm just showing you a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, but yeah, if you want, uh, if you want our paint to affect the other, uh, let me go. I'm trying to clean this up a little bit at the same time. So it's not as confusing. Um, if you want, uh, let's keep that down there and duplicate this here. And then in this second one, we're going to plug our edge map in that we painted. So that means now when we go paint, it will also affect this. Uh, and this this last one with the value is still actually uh, affecting basically the opacity of the overall thing. Uh, these other two multiplies are just cutting out things. This one's cutting out the grunge texture. This one's going to cut out our whatever we paint. This one's the overall opacity. And then that's the map going into a diffuse into the shader. So it's it's pretty straightforward. So now if you go back into your texture paint and you say go on to the um, where's the regular old paint layer edgeware uh, thing, the edgeware map and we come here and if you want to paint, let's go back here, reset all this uh, back to saturation zero and we have nothing in anything. We want tiled we want tiled um, and then we set this back to black we can actually grab our stencil again or our, our texture there and now am I in orthographic now okay uh, like this now when we paint it takes away everything right because we've set up the nodes properly uh, so that's pretty great So yeah, there you go. That's the basics of it. You can paint over here. Um, it'll, it, everything gets affected the same way, right? So, uh, yeah. That is the basics of stencil painting. So, there you go. That's the uh, that's how you do it. Um, you probably also when you when you jump up to do these top things, you probably kind of want to copy. Uh, shading. You'd want to copy a lot of this. Uh, you could probably copy most of this and then just replace the edgeware with like a, uh, you'd want to call it something like top painted edgeware. And then you could start painting fresh and get the exact same look by just having all this, this same setup up top there. So uh, yeah. Uh, if you wanted to uh, add some grunge or some dirt, some painted dirt or oil to the actual paint map, that's also uh, super easy. You just think about it logically, how you would come in here and where you would place those nodes, right? Here's your paint. Um, you're going to be painting on the color of it. So you kind of want to throw in, you know, you'd want to put an it, image map like here, uh, texture, image, texture you'd want to just kind of slug it in right here almost, right? Texture, color, RGB. You can plug it in right over top here. And uh, if you make this one uh, without uh, new, uh, call this like dirty paint. And as long as that alpha is at zero, you hit OK. Uh, everything should go back to normal. Oh, it's not actually. Oh, you got to plug the alpha in, right? You plug the alpha into the factor. Everything goes back to normal. But now on this one, you can paint dirt as well. I thought I was done, but now here I am showing you, uh, showing you another thing still. Uh, but you know, make a dirty color. I don't know. I don't know. And you can come in here and just paint, paint dirt and grunge all over this thing if you want, wherever you want. And it'll still, you know, because we've already done all this other work on the setup, uh, it's still going to, it's, it's, you know, where, where the paint is worn away, it's going to respect that and stay worn away. Uh, and you don't have to worry about, uh, it all just works. And you can see it's all real time here too. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing anything special. I'm not, uh, 
I've got a pretty complex shader set up here, but it's still just cruising right along. Nothing's bogging down or slowing down or anything like that. Um, and I'm, you know, as I'm painting, I'm painting through, uh, you know, bump layers and, and all that. So it's not, uh, it's not like it's not fast or anything. Uh, yeah, I'm just painting random, random stuff now. I'm trying to make it look a little grungy. Ah, uh, those things, man, I'd love it. If somebody knows how to fix that stuff, man, please do share because I'm excited to know it. Uh, and, you know, don't forget that metal as well. You can, you can go back to that metal, paint rust, paint any kind of dirt layer you want on that metal. Um, you, you know, now you understand the basics, you can, you can do whatever you like. Uh, and you can see how this is super powerful, right? I know procedural is amazing, uh, you know, what people can do with it. But this is also pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Ooh, that's way too strong. All right. That's getting better. Uh, this lets you really customize everything, right? So, uh, yeah, pretty useful. Uh, let's dirty up down here, right? I'm just goofing around now. You can probably stop watching if you're... If you've gotten all you need to know out of this thing. Uh, so, yeah. I'm just goofing around. Uh, yeah, there we go. Not too shabby. Uh, and I'm sure there's a way, too, if you wanted to. Uh, if you wanted to be able to paint right over top of the... Uh, if you want to include the paint in these these decals because right now you can see actually as I paint the dirt it's not covering the decal I'm sure there's a way to layer that where it all where it all works out so let's go ahead back uh, just for the heck of it I'm gonna save all these images I'm going to save my project and I'm gonna jump into layout and I get a crash And we're going to jump back into layout and uh, go to camera view, cycles, and I'm going to turn on that, that, uh, all that render stuff. And let's take a look at it. I think it looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Uh, you know, you obviously can keep going a lot farther. Uh, you could paint grunge and dirt and shadow maps or you're not shadow, but like, uh, you know, like, uh, ambient occlusion type, like all the dirt gathers where, where the joints are, where things meet and touch each other. Uh, you can really spend some time getting in there and doing that. But yeah, uh, it's pretty easy once you understand it and how, to, how the nodes kind of go together. And uh, it looks complex, but you know, as if you walk through it with me there and did what I did, you see it's not all that complex and every node makes perfect sense why it's there and what it's doing. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.